Hello fantastic people, I hope you are doing great. I'm very sorry if the sound quality of this episode is slightly worse, but I'm recording it while being on holidays. Within the last few episodes we created simple health system. On top of it we added health bar and damage indicators. Today, in the last episode of this small series, we'll add lives counter. I'm starting by importing new sprite. I change its mesh type to full rect and wrap mode to repeat. To save the settings I'm clicking on the apply button. Now inside of our HP bar object I create another one and call it lives counter. Inside of it I add UI image and call it lives counter image. Using the anchor settings I'm making sure that the image fills the whole parent component. Now I set the imported sprite as the source image. After that I change the image type to tiled. Now we have to adjust the pixels per unit multiplier. Your settings might be different because of the different image size and of course different pixel per unit setting on the sprite itself. Now I'm adjusting the size and position of the lives counter object. I'm experimenting a little bit to see what is the exact size of one life. In my case it is 27.5 units. It's important to get this measurement correctly because this will make our lives easier later on. Now I'm creating new script and call it lives counter. Just wanted to mention that the code from the whole series together with some extra stuff will be available for my patrons on patreon.com slash ptit. I'm starting by creating three serialized fields. One float to store our life width. And then two integers, one to store the maximum number of lives and then another one to store how many of them we have currently. On top of the last field I create a property. I add simple getter. Setter however will be a little bit more complicated. That will be where all the magic happens. In the first line, before assigning the value to number of lives, I clamp the new value to make sure it's between 0 and maximum number of lives. And the S on the screen you see me making an error. The clamp max should be the max number of lives. I add another private field this time of type rect transform and call it rect. In the awake method I cast the regular transform into the rect transform and assign it to our new field. Then inside of our setter I change the size delta of the rect to new vector 2 with the x being lives image width times num of lives. And for y I simply reassign the old value. This is the magic line which scales our UI element making the counter work as we would expect. Just to keep it clean I move our property over the awake method. And because I don't want other scripts to change the name of lives I make the setter private. Because of that I need two methods to allow other scripts to interact with our lives counter. First one add life and another one remove life. Both of them with default parameter value set to 1. In our game there might be systems which may want to do something when we run out of lives. So I'm adding for that unity event. I invoke it inside of our setter, but only if the past value is smaller than 0. That means that the player will run out of lives when he or she dies when the counter is already empty. If you would like to end the game one death earlier, you can simply change the less than sign to less than or equal. I just realized that we should resize the UI element also in the awake method. To do not duplicate the code, let's extract our magic line to a separate method. Let's call it adjust image width. Let's paste inside of it the special line and then let's use it both in setter and in awake method. Now let's assign our script to our lives counter object. It's time to connect it to our health system. I click on the character object and under the diet event on the health script, I drag and drop our lives counter. Then as the action I select remove life. And let's test it out. When the character's HP drops to zero, the character dies and one life is removed from the counter. Everything seems to work alright, however it would be pretty strange to do not restore the character to its full glory after it dies. So let's have a look how we can achieve that. I'm creating new script and call it character death. Inside of it I add private field of type health to store our character's health script. Of course as expected I grab and assign it in the awake method. 
Now I'm creating simple public method to define what will happen when the character dies. So the first action will be to restore the character's HP. Then let's create a private field of type vector3 to store the position where the character should be respawning. I'm defaulting it to vector3 0. Then in our onDate method I simply set the position of the character to our respawn position. Then we should create a method to define what should happen when the player runs out of lives. I of course make it public and call it on out of lives. Inside of it I use the scene manager to load a game over scene. I added a script to my character object. And then on the helps died event I invoke the on died method of our new script. And on the out of lives event of our live counter script I invoke our newly written method on out of lives. If you enjoyed this tutorial don't forget to like and comment this video and subscribe to my channel. Have a fantastic day, love you and bye bye.